my best greetings to all of you from Geneva, where we have the great honor to welcome the Prime Minister of India, His Excellency Narendra Modi. Prime Minister, under your decisive leadership, India has demonstrated extraordinary strength and resilience. From being one of the worst hit countries in the world by COVID-19 infections in April, India has drastically reduced the number of daily cases since September. So there's no doubt that India will play a critical role, if I may say so, in leading the exit from the pandemic and in driving global economic recovery and post-pandemic growth. India will also be a major COVID-19 vaccine supplier to the world in the coming months. At this critical juncture, we have a unique window of opportunity not only to reflect on how best to return to growth, but also, and I know I express your mind, how to shape a better future, which is more inclusive, sustainable and resilient. The pandemic, um, Prime Minister, has hit us all. And we are here meeting now at such a crucial moment. And of course, the world is very eager to listen to your voice. Prime Minister, please share with us your ideas about the present situation and about the future. Namaskar. First of all, I would like to congratulate Professor Klaus Schwab and the entire team of World Economic Forum. This very important forum, which is important for the world economy, you have managed to keep it alive even in such difficult times. At a time when the biggest question is how global economies will move forward, it is but natural that all eyes are on this forum. Friends, at a time when there are so many apprehensions, today I bring to you on behalf of more than 1.3 billion Indians a message of faith, of positivity, and of hope. At the time of the onset of Corona, India also feared of difficulties. I remember very well all that the well-known experts and institutions from around the world had said in February, March and April. It was predicted that the most affected country in the whole world would be India. It was said that India will face a tsunami of corona infections. Some talked of 700, 800 million Indians getting infected and some indicated over 2 million deaths in India. Seeing what the situation in countries that have large and modern health infrastructure, I think it was natural for the world to be concerned about a developing country like India. You can imagine what state of mind we were in at that time. However, India did not let disappointment get the better of it. India moved forward with an approach of proactive public participation. We focused on developing COVID-specific health infrastructure. We trained our human resources to fight against corona and made full use of technology for testing and tracking. In this fight, each and every person in India fulfilled their duties with patience and transformed the fight against Corona into a people's movement. Today, 
India is among those countries which has been successful in saving the lives of the maximum number of its citizens and a country where the number of infected people, as very rightly mentioned by Professor Schwab, is decreasing rapidly. Friends, it would not be appropriate to compare India's success with the success of any one country. The country where 18% of the world's population lives has saved the world's entire humanity from a major tragedy by effectively controlling Corona. When Corona had just started, we were procuring masks, PPE kits, testing kits from overseas. Today, not only are we fulfilling domestic demand, we are also sending these to other countries and thereby serving their citizens also. And today, it is also India that has started the world's largest Corona vaccination program. In the first phase, we are carrying out free of cost vaccination of our 30 million health and frontline workers. You can imagine India's speed by the fact that in just 12 days, India has vaccinated more than 2.3 million of its health workers. In the coming few months, we will meet our target of vaccinating 300 million senior citizens and patients with comorbidities. Friends, Sarve Santu Niramaya. May the entire world be healthy. Following on the lines of this thousands of years old prayer, India has, in these times of crisis, also fulfilled its global responsibilities from the very beginning. When the airspace of many countries across the world was closed, India not only ensured the safe return of more than 100,000 citizens to their respective countries, but India also sent essential medicines to more than 150 countries. India conducted online training for health workers of several countries. We also guided the world on how India's traditional medicine, the Ayurveda, can help in boosting immunity. Today, by sending COVID vaccines to various countries and setting up uh, infrastructure related to vaccination, India is saving the lives of the citizens of other countries also. And all at the WEF will be believed to know that while so far only two made in India Corona vaccines have been introduced to the world, in the near future, many more such vaccines will be made available from India. These vaccines will help us in assisting countries across the world faster and on a much bigger scale. With this image of India's success, with this image of India's capabilities, I also assure the business world that on the economic front also, the situation will now change rapidly. Even during the corona pandemic, by starting infrastructure projects worth trillions of rupees and by implementing special schemes for employment, India kept its economic activity going. अब भारत एक एक जीवन देश की प्रगति के लिए पूरे जीजान से जुड़ गया अब भारत आत्मनिर्भर बनने के संकल्प के साथ आगे बढ़ रहा है भारत की आत्मनिर्भरता की आकांक्षा ग्लोबलिज्म को नए सिरे से मजबूत करेगी we focus during this time on saving every single life. Now, each one of those lives is dedicated to working wholeheartedly towards India's progress. 
India is now moving forward with the resolve to become self-reliant. This aspiration of India for self-reliance will strengthen globalism in a new way. And I am sure that Industry 4.0 will greatly benefit the self-reliant India campaign. There is a reason for this, and there, there's also a basis for this belief. Friends, experts tell us that Industry 4.0 will have four key factors, connectivity, automation, artificial intelligence, or machine learning, and real-time data. Today, India is among the countries where data is available at the cheapest rates, where the most remote areas also have mobile connectivity and smartphones. India has a very large pool of experts in the area of automation and design, and most global companies have their engineering centers in India. In the area of artificial intelligence and machine learning, India's software engineers have been receiving recognition across the world for years for their capabilities. Friends, in the last six years, the kind of work that has been done in India in the area of digital infrastructure could also be a subject of study for the experts of the World Economic Forum. This infrastructure has made digital solutions an integral part of the daily lives of people in India. Today, over 1.3 billion people in India have a universal ID, the Aadhaar card, people's bank accounts, and universal IDs are linked to their mobile phones. Just in the month of December last year, transactions worth 4 trillion rupees took place using the unified payments interface upi the people from the banking sector present here would know the kind of efforts being made by big countries in the world to replicate the upi system developed in india in their countries friends we have also seen that during the corona crisis Many countries were concerned about how they could get direct financial assistance to their citizens. You will be amazed to know that during this crisis, India transferred over 1.25 trillion rupees di directly to the bank accounts of over 700 million people. This is indeed an example of the strength of India's strong digital infrastructure. Our digital infrastructure has not only made public service delivery efficient, but also transparent. India is now going to start a campaign to issue unique, uh, unique health IDs to 1.3 billion citizens for easy access to healthcare. And friends, at this uh, prestig prestigious forum, I would also like to assure everyone that every success we achieve in India will be helpful in achieving success for the entire world. Today, the self-reliant India movement that we have started is totally committed to ensuring global good and global supply chains. India has the capacity, the capability, and the reliability to strengthen global supply chains. India today has a very large consumer base, and the more this expands, the more beneficial it will be for the global economy. Friends, Professor Claude Schwab once said, India is a global player full of possibilities. Today, I would like to add that along with being a land of possibilities, India today has self-confidence and is infused with a new energy. In the last few years, India has focused a great deal on reforms and incentives-based stimulus. During this corona pandemic as well, India has accelerated structural reforms in almost every sector. These reforms are being supported 
by production linked subsidies today in India from tax regimes to FDI norms, there is a predictable and favorable environment. The ease of doing business situation in India is continuously improving. Work is being done to further improve this as well. And an important fact is also that India is matching its growth with climate change related targets at a fast pace. Friends, during this discussion that we are having on Industry 4.0, we all need to remember one other thing. The corona crisis has reminded us again about humanity as a value. We have to remember that Industry 4.02 is not about robots, but about human beings. We have to ensure that technology becomes a tool for ease of living and not some kind of trap. For this, the entire world needs to act together. We all have to act together. And I am sure that we will be successful. On this note of confidence, I would like to now uh, move on to the question answer session with all of you. Let's go on to the question answer session. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister, first for this message of hope and uh, confidence. I think it's uh, an incredible achievement how we handled the uh, COVID-19 crisis and how you showed uh, responsibility towards the world um, in taking care not only of your own country, but particularly also of your neighbor countries. I'm, I'm convinced, uh, Prime Minister, based on what you said, um, China will, uh, will uh, India and China are always competing, but China will, uh, we all will, will admire India for its growth, for its uh, great growth rates in the coming years. Um, I'm also very happy that you mentioned uh, the, your commitment to the four IR, to the uh, fourth industrial revolution technologies, and we have to make some human-centered, and I'm happy that uh, the World Economic Forum has a center for the fourth industrial revolution in Mumbai, thanks to your uh, support. 